in his physical properties. Yeah. Are you guys still in uh, the No, we're. <clears throat> we are going on record. Thank you for finding it possible to join this meeting. And um, we are continuing our class in computational chemistry. We have completed half or even a little more than half of the class um, because of our democratic procedure. We do not have much of uh, exams, but you do have a form of feedback as, a, as presentations, and they are counted like this major contribution to your grade, which uh, should count like for the midterm. So uh, when we meet next time on Thursday, please uh, consider to present your presentations. <laughs> And in order to have it quick, it would be great if you send the PowerPoints before midnight on Wednesday, so so that we can uh, <coughs> can upload them on the same computer, so that we save time on uh, loading them to the computer, so that when you come up to the stage, it is it is ready. We will try to have this uh, set up so that we do not switch cameras and everything will go smoothly and um, we spend less time on technical issues. And with Thursday meeting, we will complete the hardly fork session based on uh, wave, fun uh, wave function methods for electronic structure. So who we are and what we are doing. Uh, we are picking up skills and theories to computational characterize properties of materials. And um, we did split uh, nuclear and electronic degrees of freedom. Now we have our nuclear degrees of freedom frozen and for electronic degrees of freedom, we went through the so-called Hartree-Fock theory, which allows to reduce multi-electron problem into efficient one-electron problem, with specific tricks to take into account background field created by the all but one electrons. And uh, this theory is solved through so-called self-consistent iteration procedure. By developing this theory, we got acquainted with the concept of molecular orbitals, which are nice to visualize and look through. And we briefly went through possible observables, where we touched the coupon theorem, where in, in approximate way, one can assign reasonable scientific value to energies of individual molecular orbitals for comparison with experiment. Do I miss something valuable to summarize? And we do have uh, night sessions on practical skills, which you will cover in your presentations. So how to implement the theory and apply it to practical models. If one day some of us should not visit the lecture and just sit home and uh, push this uh, number and see if the streaming will come through. I, it's still a puzzle for me. So, what are the What are we doing today? Is it right that I have to collect some pieces of paper? Okay. Um, I'm not giving anything in return today, but um, 
probably to make you feel better, we can make you feel better. We can do what? We can agree that there will be no uh, homework on uh, coming weekend. Yeah. Because you are committing a lot of hard work on the night from Wednesday to Thursday. Thank you. So you contributed the density metrics to the to the procedure. That, that, that's correct. But not of you implemented equations. Noticeable percentage skipped equations. But uh, the <coughs> main idea is is right in words of error. So it will be our last effort uh, on the hartree fock theory on Thursday, but starting from now, we are departing from hartree fock theory. Why? What is wrong with it? Anything you didn't like about your um, computed results? I'm just playing, playing with, with the cameras. So anything you didn't like in, the hard, in uh, <coughs> practical results when you were modeling some uh, realistic molecules? Any, any observations? Yes. For one molecule, the script decided that the last um, orbital, uh -huh. the last unoccupied orbital, the highest energy, yeah, that was the band gap. Uh -huh. It, too high. Yeah, it picked here, it should have been here. Perse exact. So the, uh, says this correct. So the general hard to focus good theory because it shows rigorous way to solve complicated problems in a reasonably quick uh, way. But it does misses some uh, factors that make uh, results consistently overestimating Benga. So whatever, has red color, it will be shown as blue. Whatever is blue, it will be ultraviolet. So it is uh, consistently increasing the band gap. And the short answer is that it, it does miss so-called correlation energy. So the all electrons are considered equal, all, uh, and there is no effect of hide and seek gain. When uh, in reality, the space occupied by one electron with a certain uh, spin cannot be occupied by another one. And therefore, um, if you contribute another electron, it will avoid this, this space. While in hartree fock theory, everything is smeared out and this hide and seek um, is kind of skipped. So this is a correlation effect, associated correlated correlation energy and therefore the uh, total band gaps are overestimated. Second reason to depart from Hartree Fock. Many people who call themselves computational chemists do not want to depart from Hartree Fock, and instead they build improvements, incremental improvements to the Hartree Fock, looking to a higher level of interaction between electrons. So those, uh, uh, for example, <coughs> perturbation theory, MP2, if you were scrolling to menus of the methods, whoever is presenting it, um, you, you will see that there are several methods that are based on uh, hartree fock based on wave functions. But they all, especially if you go to incremental in, increase of precision, they will be too expensive computationally. The 
Hardy-Fock method rests on explicit evaluation of uh, two electron integrals. And th there are procedures that cannot be simplified. On the contrast, there is a completely new, completely different branch of theories that are considered a trick. They are not considered first principle theories by some pure quantum chemists because there are very serious approximations in the very seed of the, those theories. And I'm uh, going to density functional theory. So, but developing from, from this seed, one can get an ultimate efficiency, ultimate cost, <coughs> numerical cost to precision uh, ratio, and one get very acceptable level of precision with uh, moderate numerical cost. This branch of theories are predominantly imprecise. There are some strong approximations, but they work so nicely that it is worth of uh, spending like a month to, to learn them. And 90% uh, of computational uh, chemistry calculations and publications are based on this theory. So it is not a bad idea to spend time on them. So, for about a month, we will be looking at principles behind this theory, and um, we will accumulate practical skills in running density functional theory for different different models and different pieces of software. It is already included in uh, Gaussian that we are working on, but there are another p different pieces of software that also implement this theory. And. Um, here is a brief overview where we are. So we need to complete presentations, and we are already to the chapter to the density functional theory. Today it will be more or less easy start, so that you do not need to come with your full concentration and full capacity. But when we meet on next Tuesday, this will be maybe a third hardest. Our first hardest uh, was born in Pinheimer. Uh, second hardest was uh, exchange energy. And third hardest will be theorems. So this theory is based on, on theorems that um, look a little counterintuitive. It is not much of mathematical derivations, but it is like twisting your brains and looking from a completely different angle. And then we will borrow the same intellectual baggage that we already have the idea of self-consistent procedure. And when we finish this chapter, we will uh, set up flowchart that is running when the algor DFT algorithm is being computed in the software. And then we will, win, we will go over um, additional details. And somewhere we should stick observables based on density functional theory. So here is uh, just a little reminder of what you'll be doing on, uh, in two days. I hope everyone is happy. Everyone's wish is uh, taken into account. Um, if you are completely unhappy, if you want to modify something, come to me right after this meeting. So we will try to spend Plan on three minutes presentations, but they will run for seven seven minutes anyway. It's just a nature <laughs> observation. And uh, in about three weeks from now, we will do similar things about uh, another piece of software. Okay. An easy start. The goal of electronic structure part of computational chemistry when we removed the 
nuclear degrees of freedom is to find one point on potential energy surface. Find the total energy for given set of positions, right? And we were able to generate it based on wave functions, uh, Slater determinant, molecular orbitals, we found total energy. We have the same goal to find total energy, but instead of wave function and wave functions, we will use the concept of charge density. So there are two very simple, very simple concepts that we need to get acquainted with and comfortable with. So one is charge density, which is just electronic clouds. And second is concept of function. As soon as we accept them and we agree that they can be connected to the total energy, we have the basic principle of density functional theory. And it is simplified plan. You go through definitions and some background theory, then there will be theorems, algorithm, and observables. And then we are done with this uh, density functional theory. Camera. Okay. Yes. So we will be dealing with density of electrons. That is a replacement of uh, orbitals and wave functions. In our previous life, previous life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it is. not in the eternal way. It, it just in the. Uh, million of couple of weeks ago, we had a, a sequence of molecular orbitals and multi-electron wave functions. So it, uh, instead of these two concepts, we will go to concepts of charge density. So if you do have molecular orbital, we can Take it conjugated at the same point of space, same orbital, and tell that this will be absolute value square. It will be probability to find. Well, if the electron accepts to reside on this molecular orbital, then it, it will be found in the given space with this probability. Times uh, But there is an alternative interpretation of quantum mechanics that orbital is occupied by one electron, but electron is a wave, it is divisible. We shouldn't put it on record. So there is a if we we have so many, and let's use the letter row in the vicinity of position R, it means that like 1.5% of electron is placed in this little area of space. So it is distribution of one electron density if it resides on a given molecular orbit. So it, it is yet acceptable, but 
we are starting to screw our brain. So common interpretation is that wave functions correspond to probability, but we start thinking that it is density of charge. Suppose that our molecular orbitals are unit orbitals. What should we write here? Wave function conjugated multiply or one electron orbital conjugated multiply itself and integrate over the whole space. One. One. Yes, because it is normalized. Good function. Okay, so we rewrite rho sub i r No objections. I will come to this point in a second. Now let's uh, think about the second word that we need to what is function? I would say it is something similar to function, just with A, L at the end. A function that is dependent on a function. Function is dependent on a function. <laughs> yes. So how can you interpret it? Function that is dependent on a function. What, what is a function? For one input, you get one specific yes, output. Yes, yes. So function, it means that if you have uh, x1, x2, x, n, we have values for each argument. We have um, specific value of function. Good. So f equals f of x, round brackets. So we had a prompt, function of function. So it means that we here we establish correspondence from one number to another one. And if we do have a set of numbers, and it will correspond to one value, then we have a it will be another word. So for each set of numbers, we accumulate it into one number. So one function continues. Many numbers is accumulated into one. What are examples? Like any, for example, any integration. Integral x dx equals this limit will be a number, right, without argument. So we are going from a function to a number. This is a function. And typically, one, then one writes g equals g of f. Rectangle. Square, square, square brackets. We have almost accepted density functional theory. We know what is density, we know what is function. We are very close. Uh, now, suppose that we consider a molecule is more than one electron. And we set up summation of density for electron for the first orbital, density of electron for the second orbital, up to the highest occupied molecular orbital. Argument is the same everywhere. 
So it will be summation of electronic clouds associated with molecular orbitals. And if you add all of them together, we can consider it as a total density. We are skimming through. It is not rigorous, although very close to being correct. What if we place integration? What will be the answer? Mm -hmm. huh? This, there is no provocation, there is no challenge. It is simple. So, by integrating each orbital, each uh, density for each orbital, we get one. Right? So, we get n. One? Plus one, plus one, plus one. How many times? Yeah. As many times as many orbitals we have, or as many electrons occupied orbitals. So we can say it is whole or it is number of electrons. Number of electrons. So now we can write the number of electrons is a function of the total density. Make sense? No big counterintuitive steps. Good. So number of electrons depends on density. It is it is a little silly because if we consider the model, we know what the number of electrons it is kind of input. And it is, uh, we can count electrons without generating the uh, total density. But it just shows the logical connections. And the goal of density functional theory is to establish total energy as a function of, of total density. If we find this functional, if you find a way how to make correspondence from the distribution of electron density in space to the total energy, we have this task completed. Questions? Objections? orbital conjugated times itself. Integration of density over all space is one. If we add together all densities corresponding to molecular orbit, all occupied molecular orbitals, we can integrate total density and get norm one from each orbital. Therefore, it will be total number of electrons. So total number of electrons is a function of the total density. And our goal is to make the same trick for the total energy. We will spend about four or five meetings to, to get it, because it's a little more challenging than number of electrons. How are we doing? Do we, do we have uh, steam to go over one subject more? Good. So, the Let me write down the answer right away because otherwise uh, there will be not much of uh, motivation.
So in one of the oversimplified theories, one can solve this problem and get the total energy as a function of the total density. This will be not a uh, big help in describing molecules and realistic materials. It, is, um, it will be very similar to spherical force in a vacuum. But it, there, is a one, there is one theory where one can, in 20 minutes, derive total energy as a function of density. We are making it only for encouraging ourselves and believing that it is possible. So the name of the series is four mass Fermi. We know that the first name of the Fermi was in the river. So it is not a first and last name. There are two pers different persons. Thomas on Fermi theory. So this is not a critical, what follows is not a critical information for the course. If you are tired or busy, you can win back and uh, take a nap. The main message is that total energy can be expressed in terms of total data or specific approximation. If you accept this message, you are done for the day. If you are curious, you can follow how it can be done and what are the approximations. In practical life, everything will be much more complicated. It will be just a little sketch that we do not have fear of the unknown theory. So we will achieve this goal in eight steps. And um, the steps this panel will be always on the left side, so we can watch the progress. Like if you lose the track of narration, or one part of derivation is more boring than another one, you can always pick up and see, oh, okay, we have so many percent towards completion. Um, the idea of, of this Thomas Fermi theory rests on several several cornerstones. First is that electrons have suddenly forgotten that they need to interact with each other. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a universe where electrons do not interact with each other. The who you are. Out. No, I do not know you. I come through. Non-interacting electrons. Otherwise, such simple uh, derivation would not be possible. What else? It is a universe that contains of electrons only. <laughs> <laughs> so there are no ions. Just empty space with ignorant electrons that do not know that that do not recognize each other. So it's a free electron gas, non-interacting electrons. Universe of this silly electrons. You like it, right? <laughs> no, what else? It's not the whole story. No. We all like freedom and we do not like prisons. <laughs> Genuinely. But these electrons are placed into cells. So the whole space is split on the little jail cells, little boxes, and electrons are distributed over this over these boxes. Although they do not interact with, with, with another electrons and there are no ions. <sighs> So if we take it as an input, as an output, we will get this answer. So total energy is integral of total density into power 5 over 3.
boxes. If I show everything on, on slides, it will be probably boring. I, I, should, I should scratch something. Generally, size of the bombs can be rectangular, but we assume that they are cubes. And we agree that so many electrons is residing in one cube, and the volume of one cube is L to the power 3. Then we can introduce density. Density. Mass divided by volume. And we do not have to. We don't care about mass. We care about charge. So density of charge. Why are you using change and hmm? why are you using delta n and delta n? Because total number of electrons in this uh, fairy tale universe will be n capital. Delta n plus delta n plus delta n into uh, summation over all cells. Good. Nothing counterintuitive. Now, we need to tell something about energy of electrons that are residing inside one cube. So, an electron is a particle. This L3 cube is a box. So we need to recall particle in the box. Logical. Good. So what is an energy of particle in the box? is kinetic energy. And since those are silly electrons, they do not interact with each other, there is no potential energy. Only kinetic energy. Now, uh, what is momentum? Momentum minus I H bar DGX or K is uh, number of nodes, so there are there will be states with one, two, three, and more nodes, and the energy is contained. So it will be each power square two m, and now we will have four m squared. Square, H bar squared, 8 ML 
So we know that times kx squared. So it is more one dimensional moves. Make sense? We do not see errors. Maybe I do not need to edit video. Um, our boxes are three dimensional. So the energy will be x, y, z components. A bar square 8 m square and k x squared k y squared k z squared. So three quantum numbers x, k, y, k, z, determine energy of a given element inside the box. So we can depart from Cartesian space and go into space of quantum numbers. It's also three-dimensional, and we can call it a radius. So it is, I don't know how to define it, average quantum number. Then energy of one electron is P plus bar square P What is our goal and what are we doing? Are we just having fun of looking at the uh, particles in, in the boxes? No. We need to find energy of the world. Find energy of all electrons inside. So there will be more than one electron. How do we how do you approach this book? And how many electrons is inside of this? How many? This one, and we answer about the number of electrons inside the box. There is no chance to build everything based on uh, declared approximations. We need to have one more input. And this input is connected to the name of Fermi. What is, what is it? Um, it will be very pleasant and easy to assume that this equation belongs to the pool of common knowledge that we can depart from. So, suppose 
Anyone wants to comment when you give this uh, opportunity to? So. You do have a mold for an atom. You do have the off bow principle. You fill it with electrons starting with lowest until you get rid of all electrons in your uh, sur uh, sur all surplus electrons due to power exclusion. And if one projects this concept onto systems with very high number of electrons and very dense orbitals, then this concept of orbitals being occupied, 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 and then empty, 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 is translated into the language of Fermi distribution. distribution. Does it look any uh, bells? So, this is a function of how the number of electrons depend on energy of orbital. Electrons Good. Well, it is what I'm learning. <laughs> um, let's make a little surgery to this function. What is KT? Yes. So, uh, surgery. E to the power minus E minus E F. How does it look like? So at the point when argument of exponential is zero, the value of exponential equals one. When we go to the increment of the argument of exponential, it increases. When we go to the decrement of argument of exponential, it decreases. So here it goes to zero, here it goes to infinity. Right? What if we Add one. Addition of one means that we redefine the we redefine the we redefine the y axis. So where we had zero. Now we have one. Where we had one, now we have two. And where we had minus one, now it is zero. Okay? So now this function tends to one at infinity, and it still tends to infinity at, at minus infinity. Now let's do continue our surgery of Compute function. What 
if we practice one divide by by everything we have here. Let's say we'll be close to minus one. So <coughs> Epsilon goes to plus infinity. Mm -hmm. We one have one. one divided by one. So function will approach one. Agree? If energy goes to minus infinity, we have one divided by infinity. Zero. If we have E equals E Fermi, one divided by two, one, and then we continuously connect this point. And for pleasure, for convenience, let's uh, plus sign here, which means that we are looking in a different direction. Okay? So how would this uh, function respond to the value of kt? If kt approaches zero, the function will be very sharp. If kt grows, it will be more shallow. So it may sound boring, but at least logical. You do not find uh, deficiencies. So I am flipping it by 90 degrees. So here is f of epsilon. And here is energy. And here is E. One, zero. And suppose the temperature equals zero, which means that it will be very sharp. And instead, Continuous function, I will be showing just points. Number of electron, electrons on given orbital, if such an orbital exists. So it will show that up to specific energy, which we call E sub Fermi, orbitals will be occupied. All orbitals above will be unoccupied. So it is just mathematical verbalization of our common knowledge that we feel orbitals as much as much electrons we have at our disposal. And here we introduce uh, Fermi energy. Fermi energy. Which is similar to energy of highest occupied or, uh, orbital or halfway between highest occupied and highest energy. Good. I'm going to switch to to this board.
So we need to connect together this concept that we can define specific energy of, of the last occupied orbital, that energies can be defined by holding numbers, and that we, we need to bring one more piece into here. So we need to count the degenerates. I was seeking for this word for five years. So we will count for degeneracy, which means how many orbitals do have this energy? Because there is an ambiguity. There, is, there are different values of these quantum numbers that generate the same energy. OK, at least we know who we are hunting. Degeneracy. I used the help of the secretary, the university where, where I was for like, catching some typos or whatever. And I needed to send an abstract to a scientific conference. I wrote the abstract, brought to her. And she's secretary, not a scientist, just a nice uh, lady. Uh, okay, can you go mm, Okay, not bad. But here, you know, this is not a very polite word. And there was a de degenerate thing. You know, here we try, we try to be polite to each other and degenerate those are like people who are not very developed. <laughs> Can you find something? <laughs> <coughs> but we are not <laughs> we are talking about degenerate uh, energy states. So here it is a good word. So we keep browsing in the space of quantum numbers. We need three-dimensional space of quantum numbers, but it is too challenging for me to draw. <coughs> you can imagine that there is another dimension. So I draw only one x and y quantum numbers. And the energy of particle in the box depends on three quantum numbers. And I will be drawing just, just two of them. So here is ky equal one and kx equals one, two, three, and so forth. Here's ky equals two and kx equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so forth. So ky equals 3, and kx equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it is a space of quantum numbers, of quantum states. And when we, uh, and we need to find who of them are the genuine. So we can identify that several blocks, several sets of these points will correspond to the same energy. And according to this equation, which means same as in analytical geometry, equation for the circle or equation for the sphere. So if we tell that. equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. It means all points that are offset from the origin by this radius. Right? Here, offset from origin. Offset from origin. Here we do have the same. We have, instead of radius, we do have this energy times constant 
And uh, on the other side, you have this quantum numbers. So all states that will be offset from the origin by this much, this, 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 this. will be degenerate, degenerate states. Now we need to go quantitative and quantitative. I'm not going to count one, two, three, four. We are going to um, set up some mathematical equations that we all will believe. So let's count total number of states with energy less than some, some fixed energy. So let's count what is inside. If it is two-dimensional space, it will be area of a circle. 2D area. By R square. If it is three-dimensional, it will be a volume. But it, right now we are not in our favorite space of comfort. We are not in Cartesian space. We are in this crazy space of quantum numbers. But it's still rectangular, Euclidean space where we can apply same uh, analytical geometry equation. So number of states that correspond to energy less than E prime. <laughs> um, this is correct, but by the end, by the uh, final equation, for energy equal integral rho by third dr, we will put all constants into predefined constants. So we are not. Even if we scrub these constants, the answer will not depend on In this case, we are in two-dimensional space. No, 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 no. Three-dimensional space. There is another axis, Kz, and we are looking for space. Yeah, for sphere. What if we are looking for all states that stand between E prime and E prime plus D. What if you are looking on all states in the vicinity of a specific uh, radius or specific energy? Just take away the inner uh, radius from the outer radius. If uh, you take that we neglect the constants, but uh, formally uh, the volume of um, of the skin is area of the skin times thickness of the skin. So we need to d n over d r times delta. Right? So we take this equation, take derivative over the radius, and then multiply by thickness. So by derivative, we, we get from volume to the surface area, and here into the thickness parameter. 
So the derivative of the third power. X <laughs> equals three x squared. Three x squared. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so device factor four third from school uh, high school geometry. Y stays here. Three from calculus. R and two from calculus. Times delta R. once again. So the question is, what is it? How do you interpret? And I am going to stand on my head. Not physically. <laughs> I'm going to invert this expression and tell that our R bar equals square root times a n a squared divided by a inverse n. And if we are meticulous, we can simplify it by putting l h bar away, square root n, square root mg, square root n. And let's put square root of energy even apart times e to the power of one half. So the radius in this crazy space is a square root of energy with some constants. Now we are going to merge this and this together. So I am planning to rewrite this expression using this uh, definition and then ask you a question what it, what it is, how to interpret it one, once again. Instead of R squared, we replace what? Why did you take the square root? Hmm? Why did you take the square root of R squared if you have R squared in part? Because uh, this is more general. This is connection between our um, variables that do have meaning. And here is just a serial algebra. function of energy. Density of electrons, of this um, non-interacting electrons in the box that do um, that do not interact and uh, their number um, 
can be different. Okay, let's uh, go through the pre-recorded -pre stuff. So we do have so many states. We are looking for the volume, which is proportional to, to the third power. And here we have the number of states in the, in the shell. Now we make a derivative of, the, of this uh, distance and look how many states are in the thin shell. So it will be uh, power 2. And here we convert, uh, establish conversion between energy and this radius. So the number of states, okay, I caught myself on the error, but if you didn't find it, it's good. Here is all, all correct, and uh, all but last um, all equations are correct, but they are not leading into the right direction. Um, so here is total number of states as function of energy. So constant energy to the three over two, three from cube, two from from the conversion. Now, for, the, for finding number of states in the thin shell as function of energy, we should take the derivative not uh, over the R, but over the energy. It is, it is what we need. And if we do it over the R, one needs to add a second derivative as a chain rule. Good. So, if you take derivative, of the total number of states over energy, this will be number of states that have specific energy, density of states. And it will behave as a square root. Make sense? So we are slowly departing from, from this crazy space of quantum numbers, and now we are trying to establish connection between energy total energy and uh, energy of orbitals and then go to, to density. So density of states. And if you were exposed to advanced quantum chemistry, you remember for three-dimensional, two-dimensional, and one-dimensional density of states looks different. The three-dimensional square root. Now, the last step where we, it is what we, we need. The, Fermi distribution that we already covered. And now we need to find the total energy of all electrons inside the box. Make sense? No objections. Okay. And we will uh, bring together Uh, it, it was not on the record. We will bring together all components that we have discussed with. inside the box. How do we find expectation value of something? It's, uh, it's not science, not physics, not chemistry, it is math. Momentum of a distribution. It is probability to find something times the uh, 
variables that we need to make average for. So if you need to find expectation value of energy, we put energy, we put density, pro probability that the raw states at uh, such energy, and uh, the keyword is degeneracy, such energy, times number, times occupation of such states as function of energy. So energy, degeneracy or density of states, and here occupation. In integral over all possible energies. Now, we do assume that temperature is equal to zero, and uh, our Fermi distribution reduces to our standard thing, with only occupied and unoccupied, which means that we need to integrate only from minus infinity to Fermi energy. So integrate only over occupied orbit. Then we can remove distribution in E times N of E. Right? And this uh, N of E can be replaced by constant times E power one half. Constant E power one half and times E D. energy of all electrons inside the box what is the integration of polynomial the power would get increased by one and one yields a denominator. Uh, agree that there are, there are no energies below zero. From zero to then total energy inside one box will be constant times energy Fermi to the power five over two. So if you know the energy of home which is Fermi energy, we take power and no matter how many orbitals were, we get the total energy. We already got it. But we, it doesn't make sense to connect energy to energy. We need to connect energy to density. Right? Where is the density? Density is number of electrons per volume. So the total number of electrons in the box will be the same equation, but without the energy. So number uh, degeneracy times occupation. So degeneracy is e to the power of one half. And occupation is either zero or one. Therefore, we integrate only until Fermi energy or occupation is one in D. And there are uh, constants. Integration of power one half leads to power E three halves. And we evaluated from zero to Fermi energy. So total number of electrons will be constant times 
having energy to the power zero. Good. Now, let us let we stand on our heads once again. Invert the dependence. So, if the number of electrons depends on energy this way, then we can take delta n to the power two thirds being the third energy. Right? So now, if we know the density number of electrons, we can find what will be the energy of home, Fermi energy. And we are going to plug this expression into here. So delta is going to be some constants. Now, instead of Fermi energy, we plug in delta n to the power to the points to the power by forty. Good. Can we cancel the powers this way? <laughs> what is wrong? So delta E equals constants delta M to the power five thirds. But we need not the total number of energy, we need the density, right? Therefore, I'm sorry, I have to go. Yeah, I have to go. Otherwise, I need to cut it from the recording. <coughs> so, we need to add to multiply and divide by delta V by the volume. And in order to keep everything correctly, we need to uh, introduce here delta V into the power 3 over i. Good? Also possible. Then we redefine anything which is in front as a new constant. And we do have that the total energy in one so is constant times delta n over delta v times rho to the power five third. Good. So one box. And if you have more than one box, if you integrate over all boxes, then the e it will be summation over all boxes. Which means integral over all three dimensions. Rho of R to the power five thirds G R. So it is where we were starting. I think the time is over. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, the time is over for broadcasting. Uh, do you have a minute to wrap it up? So the total number of um, the total energy is expressed in terms of the density. If we integrate it over the whole space, we are getting the total energy and we establish a connection between density of electrons and total energy. So if our universe would have no ions and if electrons would be so silly that they would forget about to interact with each other, we would have theory of everything. Now we need to just bring two things back. Interaction of electrons to ions and electron interaction of electrons to each other. Interestingly, that it depends only on the first power of density. It's not a, uh, not first power. Only on density. There are no gradients of density. There are no density in different points. 
So it, it depends on the locally on density evaluated at one point of space, local. Therefore, this Thomas Fermi theory serves as a first step to so-called local density approximation. See you Wednesday tomorrow, 5 p.m.